Hi everyone. I'm Ankit Morampodi. I'm a software engineer on Core Data Access Team at Box. I'm going to present how we implemented CDC pipeline on MySQL state based application. It is an agenda for this presentation. I'll start with introducing CDC covering high level details, then different kinds of MySQL replication streams from CDC point of view, followed by implementation of CDC on state based application and high level architecture of our CDC pipeline. Okay, let's start. CDC is acronym for change data capture. Change data capture is a design pattern that enables capturing changes to data and notifying actors so they can react accordingly. Imagine there is user table in database and a notification service that send emails to the user. When a, when a new user is created, there will be insert event corresponding to the table insert. Notification service would listen to that insert CDC event and reacts by sending welcome email to the user. When the user update his or her password, the notification service would react to update event and send password change email to the user. Generally, a CDC event captures all the information regarding a change to a row. It captures the snapshot of the row before and after the mutation was applied, along with some metadata. Metadata includes the name of the table, primary key of the row that was mutated, and the mutation operation that resulted in this event. Mutation operation can be insert, update, or delete. This is how a typical CDC pipeline would look like. There is an application that does read write to MySQL. All writes to MySQL will be propagated to replicas. CDC service sit alongside of MySQL replicas. It also subscribe to MySQL replication stream, pretending as a, as a replica. It converts the billog event that, that it received into CDC events and then publish them onto a message bus. The replication stream is required to be in row form. All popular open source CDC frameworks need row-based replication. Along with row-based replication, MySQL also support state-based replication. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to cover high-level overview of these replication streams from CDC point of view. In row-based replication, bin log file stores record level changes that occur to the table. I have a sample here on this slide. The query on the top is executed by the application. The query is straightforward. It's adding 300 more pairs to an existing quantity. The query on the bottom is a corresponding min log event. It looks totally different from the query in the top. It still is an update query. The where part of the query is a snapshot of the row before update. The set part is a snapshot of the row after the update. All the columns in the table are present in both where and set parts. The only thing that's missing is the column names. That can be easily obtained by querying DB for the scheme. On the other hand, in certain based application, the binary log stores the SQL statements used to change the database. The bin log pretty much looks like the same. The bin log event pretty much looks like the query that executed by application, unlike row based event. The bin log event doesn't contain neither pre nor the post mutation state of the row. This is the recap of what I presented in the previous two slides. Robust replication contains all the information required to build a CDC event, but the state base is missing most of it. Robust replication and CDC are made for each other. Their match is made in heaven, but there is a lot of work involved in making SPR work for CDC. So far, I have presented why CTC doesn't work on vanilla SPR. In the next slides, I will go over how we built our CTC pipeline on top of SPR. One of the things that's missing in state and based events is pre mutation state of the row. Next few slides, I'm going to go over how we added pre to state and based events. Our solution, SQL comments. We use SQL comments to inject pre mutation state into bin logs. We need a placeholder for pre mutation state in the query. Comments fits the bill. Let's talk a bit about query comments. MySQL support placing comments within, my, within SQL statements. Comments can appear on a single line or span across multiple lines. MySQL ignores comments while passing SQL statements. However, they are preserved in certain basement logs. Here is a sample query with comments. You can see trace ID 
application and user ID fields wrapped in C style comments highlighted in blue. Now, it's not that straightforward. There are a couple of prerequisites to do this. Let's talk about the mechanics. In order to append permutations to comments, the application layer must load the row into memory. You also need to log the row to block otherwise mutations. Then the loaded row is encoded to a portable format and appended to the comments. We need to encode rows to portable format. A serializer is needed for the job. Whatever serializer we're going to choose should meet the following criteria. Serializer should be fully typed with, sch with schema support and, all and also support schema evaluation. Serialized data should be very compact so that row binaries will take very less storage space. It should also support separation of schema from encode data. This also helps with reducing the storage space. Obviously, it has to be very fast. We chose Ebro for serialization. Ebro checks all the boxes in our kitty. Even though there is no need to send Ebro schema along with data, schema is required to decode the binary data in query comments. So we store Avro in confidence schema registry. I have added a diagram in the slide to explain interaction with schema registry. Encoder on the application side saves save schemas to schema registry to get an ID for the schema. The ID is then appended to query comments. On the CDC side, the decoder will take the ID from the comments, retrieve the schema from schema registry. The schema is then used to decode the permutation state. Here is a sample comment that we append to query. You can see schema ID and snapshot binary highlighted in red. There are few things to watch out with comments. Since we append a lot of data to queries, their sizes would go. There may be a need to increase max allowed packet value for MySQL. Luckily, we didn't have to do that. The existing value is big enough to support our needs. Size increase is less than 100 KB for 99% of our queries. Also, bin log files will get bigger, filling up disk faster. This will affect on disk retention for bin logs. Honestly, it's not any worse than row based bin logs, but that's something to watch out. We are currently adding around 6 to 8 MB of additional data to bin logs per second. Lastly, there may be a need to impose restrictions on cardinality of mutations. Since the query size is directly proportional to number of rows changed, putting limits would prevent super large queries. Prior to series implementation, there aren't any limits on our mutation APX, but we added some for this reason. Great. So far, we have solved the pre-mutation field. This is a good checkpoint to do a mini recap. This is where our journey started. Statement based events doesn't have primary key before and after. By appending encoded permutation state to query comments, before is now available in statement based bin log events. Now let's tackle a post mutation field and primary key. The way we compute post mutation state is tightly coupled with relational data access service at box, also known as Credence. So I'm going to dig into that a bit. Credence provides a uniform way to interact with relational data at box. One of its primary responsibilities is protecting MySQL. And because of that, it provides strongly opinioned APIs supporting limited set of data access patterns. In a simplified view of Credence architecture, Credence sets between MySQL and application. All application interactions with MySQL, they go through credence. Credence also provide caching support for relational data. Let's go over mutation query support by credence. Credence supports multi-row inserts with explicit column values. Look at the sample insert query. You would notice that all the values are explicitly specified. None of the column values are computed by MySQL. Credence also support conditional updates only by primary key. 
columns and the new values are explicitly specified for each row in the conditional set. Look at the weight class in the sample query. You will see that fruit one and fruit two are being updated. If you look at conditional set closely, a new quantity is specified for both uh, fruit one and fruit two. Clean's does this whether or not quantity has changed for both one and two. And finally, deletes are performed only by primary key. Over the years, we have found that not only these query patterns support majority of our client use cases, but also help us effectively protect MySQL. Let's go over queries that are not supported by Credence. Credence doesn't support insert or update queries with MySQL computed column values. The sample query that I put in here will increase the quantity of fruit two by 100. Instead of setting an explicit value, MySQL, when it executes this query, takes the existing, existing quantity in the table and add 100 to it. These kinds of queries are unsupported. Clearance clients who need to support these kinds of queries would first read the row, perform necessary computations in memory, and then execute mutation requests with explicit values in a transaction. Of course, rows needed to be locked to prevent any race simulation. Clearance also doesn't support updates or delete queries with where classes that are unbounded. A sample query on the slide will delete rows of all the fruits that were expired. The number of rows affected by this query could range from zero or to entire table. Green client who need to execute these kinds of queries would load primary key first using read APIs and issue delete queries using primary keys in a transaction. With the background of what we can support and not support, let's see how we compute post mutation state and primary key of throws. Given how clients construct queries, all the columns that change and their new values, also known as TIFF, is present in the mutation query. We can extract that information by parsing the query. We can also update primary keys from parsing queries as well. If we take the pre mutation state in the query comments and add diff to it, that will give us the post mutation state. Since we're extracting diff from queries, there is no additional change to query size, unlike pre. Let's see how we compute post mutation state for inserts. Here's a sample insert query. We, we are creating a brand new row here. So there is no pre mutation state. Query contains column values for the new row. We extract the query, sorry, we pass the query to extract diff for the new. Since there is no pre mutation state, whatever is in the diff is the post mutation state. Primary key is also included in the diff. This is how we compute post mutation state for, for insert statements. Now, let's see how we compute post mutation state and primary key updates. It's more complex than computing for insert queries. Here is a sample update query with comments. In the comments, uh, you, you can see the Avro schema ID and the pre mutation snapshot binary of the row. And the conditional set part of the query contains all the new column values by primary. We pass the update query to get the columns change and the new value, i.e., diff, and decode binary from query comments to obtain the pre mutation state. Pre and diff are merged to create the post mutation state. This is how post mutation state is computed for updates. The main downside of extracting different queries is that series implementation is tightly coupled with data access service, in our case, credence. When our credence query build change, CDC service need to change as well. But changes to query builder happens rarely for us. So it's not a big deal. If you would like to avoid query parsing, you can also you can always append diff to query comments, like we did for pre-mutation state. If you totally want to decouple CDC from application, you can append post-mutation state to query comments. Just like pre, 
appending T4 post would result in query and will not for expression. So we chose not to take this one. Okay, we are almost at the end of this section. Let's do a recap of what we have seen so far. This is where we start our journey. Statement simplification is missing primary key before and after. We solve before by appending permutation state to comps. We solve after by extracting different points. And we also got primary by passing queries as well. Now, with all the data required for CTC when present in statement based events, we can build a CTC stream on top of it. Now that we covered how we can argument SPR with all the needed data for CTC, let's go over Artesha of CTC pipeline at Box. This diagram is similar to what we saw in the earlier slide with few differences. We have clearance interacting with MySQL doing reads and writes. Changes to MySQL memory will be propagated to MySQL replicas. We implemented a bin log trailer that subscribed to certain based replication stream pretending as a MySQL replica. It converts statement based events to CDC events and publishes them to Kafka. We talk about schema registry earlier. We use it to store Avro schemas. One thing new in this diagram that I haven't covered is a checkpoint store. We checkpoint PG digits into a Kafka topic. The checkpoints help us with providing at least one delivery. I can go over this offline if anybody's interested to learn more. Obviously, MySQL bin log format is set to statement. I hope it is remembers here. MySQL infrastructure box has hundreds of shares. We emit tens of thousands of CDC events per second. We have tens of CDC consumers powering both online and offline use cases. This marks end of my presentation. I have included my email address here. Feel free to, feel free to contact me if you'd like to more. Thank you.